Hey, good morning. It's Mike with Mikey's Fest, Mikey's Board, Green Glides, all that good stuff. And then Kirkwood, California, it's a ski resort. Clean another con, though. I've been cleaning a mess of these lately. But check out this fun project. So there's a slate, what it's supposed to look like. And this is a VRBO, vacation rental by owner. And do I need to describe what's going on here? If you don't know what you're looking at, you are looking at, well, kitchen grease, obviously, but the effects of string mopping. So a place like this has renters coming and going all winter long, ski bums, and then they'll have a cleaning crew come in after each, each uh, batch of renters to clean the whole house. And then uh, they're obviously using the, the yellow devil, as we call it, and just spreading the gunk around. And if you've ever tried to mop a slate floor due to the shaling or the rough texture, it's very difficult. It's hard to get them to move across. So I just, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen or found a, a better example of how not to take care of your slate. Incredible, huh? So I'm going to mask off the three stainless steel appliances there just in case some of the cleaner gets scratched or splashed on there, sorry. And this is the kind of deal where I had them move all the furniture because I'm a one-man show and you do not, do not want to drag furniture whatsoever on a natural stone. You're going to scratch it. And hey, look at right there. I'm going to zoom in. See that uh, speckling? If you've never seen that before, that's from those anti or no skid rug pads. The adhesive eats into the flooring. And it's kind of unusual because this is a, um, if it was sealed, it's certainly not a topical seal, but uh, that will probably clean off of there. But if you ever deal with a topically sealed floor, and that could be wood, stone, glazed, ceramic, uh, it can totally destroy the coating of that floor. And sometimes they're unfixable if you can't sand it off. So I'm going to try, I'm going to go all out. There's no reason to start tame on this one. But I'm thinking a Sager Tsunami and a CRB deck brush, grout brush around the edges. And then I'll see if my hard surface glide will work on this. It's pretty darn lumpy. I may be better off with the longer bristles of a Westpac hard surface wand, which I also brought. The thing with slate you don't want to do is use a spinner. It takes 700 PSI to get a spinner to move, and 700 PSI will often etch, pressure etch, not chemically etch, circles into a soft stone like this, and that can be virtually irreparable. So do not use a spinner on slate. And uh, anyway, they got all the furniture off. You can see they moved it into the carpeted area, which I'll come back and clean maybe next week. And down the stairs. Whew, boy. This would be nice to have an assistant on just to go up and down those damn stairs all day long. Anyhow, I will uh, film and photograph the process on this, but... Uh, Man, that's going to be a ton of fun, result-wise anyways. Not so much on the labor. All right, be back. Ah, little tsunami goes a long way, huh? The magical 10-inch Austrian CRB. Just going to do half so it doesn't dry out. We're in an extremely dry climate this fall and beautiful Kirkwood. So I'll do that second half and then the stairs and a little landing after this. Get it dry with my dry pods. Don't give me any smack talk for putting it on their worn out table. Yeah, isn't that satisfying? Beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Sager. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Been all scrubbed and prepped. CRP, doodle bug, wrap brush along the edges. A little bit of dwell time. 
Now my Sapphire 370, my Sapphire Titanium with the Green Glide Brush Glide. Check it. That's 400 PSI, folks. No need to blast through. No need to blast anything. Use your cleaning fundamentals. Don't damage your customer's floors if you want to save 10 minutes a job. Huh? You saw how black that floor was. 9 out of 10 carpet cleaners that came in here at 200. Uh, 2,500 PSI, blown out the grout, blown out a quarter inch of slate. I'm sorry, man. Slate's delicate. That happened. That's your fault for cooking. The lawn gets right in there in the edges. No need for a second detailer tool. No need for a second lawn on the truck, for Christ's sake. Come on. I mean, that is still beautiful, and that's a very uneven floor. Two inches to the cuff, 400 PSI. Now, 370. I think what you could do with an 870. One or two dry strips. Put a bonnet over it. Put a dry pod down. Flap and save your super sealer. Let's go magic. Did that happen? Oh, well, that's that grass thing. Woo! This is what this industry needs. Only the KISS, elemental P. Keep it simple, stupid. Methodology for carpet cleaners. Sorry, let me back up. For multi-surface cleaners. It's going to be cooler than that. Man. So cool. I think these people are going to say when I send them to the before and afters. Say is when you come to my house in the uh, whatever district of Bay Area, California, and do the same thing. Yes, man, it certainly was. I mean, that was really hard. No, but yeah, I love the same people around second homes and ski resorts. If they ask you what the price is, put some plastic on your uh, stainless just in case. Yeah, right in the corner. Yep, I sell these ones. You know what I sell? Also, other stuff I fully believe in. And that I use. That I use. On a regular basis. I design this stuff for me. If it works for me, nobody more particular. I'll sell it to you. But this one, with one glide, 1450. Want to add another glide? I need to be up. I'll have some package deals coming up. I'm going to keep some in the inventory. If you can change the jetting on these logs to 80, 80 degree all the way across. Yeah, I've got one coming in. 400 PSI. Right in front of it, I think I have to change all this up a little bit. Twenty years of junk. Come on, boy. Learn to be a people. Believe it. Thank you, Mark Sager, for making chemistry that works. Thank you, Legend Brand, for making equipment that works. Thank you, Red, for bringing the uh, CRB from overseas and keeping at it. My little steel brush to a few of these areas. Yeah. Okay, drop it. Oh, it's better in there. Alright, I gotta go get a little brush. 
enjoy. This is my little magic, magic stain grout remover. Little wire brush. All I need is front of the kitchen a couple spots. Rather than trying to blast it out with pressure and destroy the floor, get on your knees and be a gentleman about it. Yeah, I'm gonna rinse that with a wand. Yeah, it's gonna be freaking amazing. Ready? Done and dry. What do you think? Are you gonna be happy? That uh, line of debopcation completely uh, gone or invisible? To my eye, anyway. I can still see the the rug dimples from the pad, unfortunately. Not much I can do about that. If I had some grout, I would patch that. But. Uh, Jeez, so uh, back there still drying. Came out just as nice. So that's a very safe and efficient way to clean slate. Low pressure, more chemistry, plenty of agitation. And I didn't see any shale come off. When you clean with uh, 700 PSI or more, you're gonna blow shale off, which isn't the end of the world, but sometimes it'll reveal Something underneath you didn't want it to. And you have to always have the potential blowout grout. And more importantly, etch the slate. Which you can do with a, a uh, hard surface wand too. You can create four lines or five lines, however many jets they have, very easily on these floors. So keep that in your uh, memory bank. And see you on the next one.